best boxing content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and punch that bell for notifications. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to Bella Entertainment in association with WallStreet.com, Sportsbook and Casino, the brand name of boxing, Everlast, America's number one bourbon, Jim Bean, and BetSPG.com presents the main event of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the middleweight division. Sanctioned by the Arkansas State Athletic Commission, Secretary Claude Carpenter. The three judges at ringside scoring this bout on the 10-point must system will be Sonny Ingram, Jim Lindbergh, and Russ Paramore. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Elmo Adolf. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with pride and dedication to the men and women of the United States Armed Services, we proudly dedicate this event. So from Little Rock, Arkansas, ladies and gentlemen, let's get her ready to rumble! Introducing Purge, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black with white, and weighing in officially at 158 and one half pounds. An excellent professional record of 14 victories, including nine knockouts with only three defeats and a draw. He comes to us from Puerto Cabello, Venezuela, now fighting out of Asheboro, North Carolina. Please welcome Marcos Terminator Primera. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the stars and bars, and weighing in at 161 pounds. This 2000 U.S. Olympic medalist now has a perfect professional record consisting of 14 bouts, 14 victories, including 10 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the pride of Little Rock, Arkansas, Jermaine. Bad intentions, Taylor! Hey, gentlemen, you received the instructions earlier. I personally have told you what I expect of you. Both of these are good. Anything underneath here is going to be low. Is that understood? Shake hands, come out boxing. So the obligatory stare, and Jermaine Taylor's right up there at championship level. And with that, we're set to go. Jermaine Taylor with the hometown in his corner. You can see right away that Primera is pretty much the same size as Jermaine Taylor. I've seen him a lot against middleweights that were a little bit shorter. He didn't have quite the reach, and that's not the case with Primera. The win over Dante Craig that Primera had in Las Vegas, which was uh, an upset win, was a very, very impressive win. seen him fight before as a superb jab, likes to throw combinations, and he is an excellent body puncher. Maybe that's that is 
one criticism of Taylor right now. Jab of Taylor working very effectively in this first round. Taylor's had to grow up very quickly. His father left the family when he was five years old. He had three younger sisters that he almost literally had to become a man of the house and raised it down to his friends much. He uses his grandmother as inspiration. I think she had hand speed of Taylor. Grandmother was shot and killed by his uncle, who then, three days later, killed himself. And uh, she was very inspirational in his growing up, but uh, the last thing he does is uh, say a little prayer and dedicate the fight to his grandma. He says that because he had so much responsibility as a youngster, now as an adult, he feels like he's trying to have the fun he couldn't have when he was a youngster. He's having some fun right now against Marcos Brunello. He really is. He's looking very sharp. Keep in mind that the crowd is going to react much more to Taylor's punches than they would to anybody else that we've seen tonight. Nice work. Just, just hey, just keep demonstrating the patience. Get, keep control with the jab. You, you start, you're starting to see the right hand. You're starting to see the right hand. Okay? Look, look at me now. When he gets upright, it's when he jabs. When he bends his legs, he ain't doing shit. So pop that jab in there, okay? The right hand, you're starting to see that right hand. Right, so get off a little bit more this round, okay? Mm -hmm. A little bit more quickness getting off, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's put them together now. Let's put them together. You have every bit as much yeah. quickness. Let's get the quickness going this round, okay? That's okay. Let's get it going this time. That's one round. Good work. Jermaine Taylor has all the punches. There you see him throwing a couple of left hooks, doubling up with that punch. There is no punch he doesn't throw well. He throws the uppercut, the hook, the jab, the straight right hand. Round number two, and uh, in the corner, just asking for more of what he did in round one, which was very effective. They had to change sparring partners, Taylor did, when uh, Marcos Rivera came in as the opponent released off the Brian Barbosa fell out of this fight. And uh, they had to change the uh, effect because Barbosa is a shorter fighter, fighting more in a Joe Frazier type of style who would come in after you. And obviously, as you can see, Rivera gives you a different one. Taylor just not letting Rivera get off. Good right hand is looking to try and load up and land that. He's trying to use his own jab, which of course would be a very effective weapon. A way to notify someone else's jab is using your own. Really getting out quick, though, early in this fight. Exclusively in this round. Good right hand. I think that got Rivera's attention. It's a very good right hand. Rivera's really there for the right hand. Look at his left hand. Rivera trying to use some gamesmanship, talking to Taylor, and letting him know that those power punches did nothing, but they landed and they count. I'm not sure they did nothing. Number two. Incidentally, that round was this time. That was that round was two minutes instead of three. Too much waiting. And that may have been a break for Marcos okay. Romero, who of course was taking some. Dig it. Big okay, dig it. You would think in the hometown of uh, Jermaine Taylor, they wouldn't cut short a round where he's doing well. No, you're not getting okay. He's looking for one damn punch. That's all. Step to your right a little bit. Rip, rip those darn ribs. So, listen, 
You see him doing this, right? We see Jermaine Taylor. There's some of that vaunted body work that we've talked about, and the right hand curling around the defense of Premier. Now, now, now we can see in the replay that those punches were partially blocked, but nevertheless, they had some impact. And there, El Moedov will give a warning for using the shoulder to Jermaine Taylor. And Premier continuing to talk to him as Taylor threw those combinations, trying to intimidate the young fighter. Taylor has not allowed Primera though to do any business of his own. Right hand again to start things that Primera again says, come on. But I mean Primera is really there for the right hand. His left hand is at his side. You know, Pat Burns said they come up with a, a phrase before every fight when they're training. This one was, you need to will yourself on your opponent. And what they meant by that was to really concentrate and block out everything that would happen uh, from this home crowd and this environment and just play and will yourself to win this fight against Primera. And the concentration level of Jermaine Taylor has been excellent. He really does look all business there. Primera slipped the jab in, but again, he keeps that left hand down there. He is going to clock. punching in this last round and there you see a perfect example of it but Primero trying to take him off his game trying to intimidate the young fighter by talking to him constantly Taylor wouldn't bite however and uh, just stayed about his business here was where he would get a warning by Elmo Adolf Jermaine Taylor for using the forearm against Primera. So, so that's a veteran's trick by the youngster. And at the end of the round, here was that beautiful combination. Love those double left hooks to the body by Jermaine Taylor. Very impressive. Yeah, he's been very impressive all along. And, and not being distracted by Primera's talking, as you said. And one of the reasons for that, actually, they, he and uh, Pat Burns watch the movie Bagger Vance together. And they use the Bobby Jones character in that movie and his ability to blank everything out except what's going on directly in front of him with the business at hand to get inspiration out of uh, out of their fighter, out of Taylor. And, and 
I don't know whether Becker Vance is doing it or not, but somebody in there is doing it. He wants a physical figure. He might be in the ring with yeah, him. Right can't tell. That's right. I think I see, I see Will Smith somewhere. <laughs> You know, what fascinates me about that and uh, these scenes, if there wasn't a lot of X's and O's that went into their training, you might think of it as smoke and mirrors, but it's really not. It's about getting them ready, both mentally and physically, for a fight. Well, and how much of this sport is meant to yeah. a good portion of it? Good double left hooks and Jermaine trying to act like nothing happened. And guess what? It's possible Jermaine Taylor could do this over 10 rounds and Primero wouldn't get knocked out. Of course, he would end up with a win. So he's testing Jermaine Taylor's patience here. So far, I think Taylor's been the whole package. An excellent jab. Look at that jab. Actually knocked his head back. Really sharp jab. And again, it brings us back to the important point as we assess Jermaine Taylor right now. The one thing we, we know he can do all this. We know that he has tremendous hand speed, good power. What we don't know is when a really good middleweight can punch cracks and what will happen. That's always the question at hand. And Primera, even though he's not throwing a lot of punches, not been able to throw a lot of punches, does have some pop. Well, yeah, just ask Dante Craig, who was right. whacked by him. That was a good left hand. Primera, I don't think he's going to shake that one. He doesn't waste a lot of punches. No, he threw a combination there, put the last another one, so what did he do? He stepped back and then he didn't get hit by it. It's not easy to come up with because he brings his hands back very quickly and he's always ready to step up, to the side if he thinks you're going to hit it. He's very balanced, too, for a young fighter. He, does, he just doesn't make a lot of mistakes. A shot to the back of the head. Six, seven, eight. The men are now covering up. And Taylor just right on. Boy, does he look sharp. And what does he do? He takes a step back to assess his damage and figure out what he can do to make it better. That's not uh, normal for a 24 year old with only as much experience as he has. Primero's tough on him. Well, he said he wouldn't quit. Pat Burns said he wouldn't quit. And there's evidence of it right there. But this crowd loves what they're saying. Well, it's been a clinic so far. I don't know how much longer you want to let it go, but he's not going to win the fight. Quit fight the way he's fighting. Yes, sir. Okay? Did you hear that? Okay, now we got to listen to that. we got to get busy out there, Marcos. Too reactive. Then I get some thumb on him. Too reactive. you got to get busy with this guy. All right, you got to start taking it to him. Fast feet, Marco. You can save him for another day. Yes, sir. All right. Fast feet, Marco. Here we take a look back at the variety of punches used by Jermaine Taylor. Jabs, hooks, straight right hands, jabs. And after he had him in trouble, what did he do? He went back down to the body as well. So we see a terrific variety from Jermaine Taylor, and it all culminated in the knockdown of Primero. And there you see it. In that sequence, you saw just about everything a boxer can do to be effective. And it even included the right hand to the body. And did you hear Elmo Adolf go to the corner of Primero between rounds and say, you're not going to win a fight fighting like that. But, you know, I'm not so sure that it isn't that Marcus Primero wants to fight. I think it's just more that, that Taylor's not allowing him to get off. The hand speed is the key element. You made the point in the first round. He's being out quick. When you face a fighter with that kind of blinding hand speed, it's very difficult to do what you want to do. Look at that jam and circling. Rivera, Rivera. Elmo Adolf says, don't grab him by the back of the head. I like that Elmo Adolf is, is refing this as objectively as any human could possibly do it. That's good. That's what it's supposed to be. In the football teams. He does it all. Primera coming forward as his camp suggested he might try and do, but Taylor oh, continues to use the jab effectively and keep him at bay with that punch. I'm very impressed with the hand speed of Jermaine Taylor. 
appears to be by Kurt Miller. But he's up there with as quick as I've seen. He's had some impressive wins. When he beat Sam Hill in a 10 round decision, was right after Hill had beaten David Reed, a 1996 Olympian, gold medalist. And now here he is beating Primera right after he had beaten Dante Craig, a teammate of him on the Olympics. That jab is a weapon. I mean, that's not a good right hand. And Primera's a trouble. how well Taylor is slipping those jabs. We talk about how he'll do when he gets hit by a middle top flight middle way. What if he does it? Absolutely. If that's the case. I mean, this is a very impressive performance so far. This is not nice. nice. That was a beautiful move. A Two, left power three. hook set him down. That's it, so I mean, this was no, 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 no. I can't no, 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 no. no, no. is an example. This is very impressive right from the opening bell. He just never let Primera in the fight. And, and I don't think that had to do with anything that Primera didn't do. It had everything to do with what Jermaine Taylor did do. You made the point, Barry, and it's true. We're used to seeing that kind of hand speed and combination punch by middle Rock, weights, saw, baby. or by welterweights, or lightweights, or Happy people birthday below to my little brother Jason, man. Happy yeah. birthday, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in the middle. No, you. This was a there. very impressive man, performance. Come on home, man. Come on home, Gonna get man. a chance to, to look back on earlier in that round and then the uh, the finish, which was a scintillating left hand. Jermaine Taylor using the jab to set things up at all times. Look at the punishing jab. And then he would continue with the uppercuts and some, some great punches. The variety of punches is what impresses me so much. He knows exactly the punches to use. Primera goes low and so uses the uppercut. And what impressed me about this is a counter left hook that sends him down. He's really not a counter puncher. That's not his stock and trade. But guess what? He knows how to do it. And uh, that I thought was impressive. I I'd be very interested to see his connect percentage because it had to be extremely high. He, he didn't waste any punches at all in that fight and didn't miss a whole lot. Let's go to Michael Buffer, make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, following the knockdown, referee Elmo Adolph waves off the 10 count and calls a halt to the bout, the official time. Two minutes and 12 seconds of round number five. The winner by knockout victory, he is still the undefeated pride of Little Rock, Arkansas, Jermaine Bad Intentions.